Praise the Lord. Bona afifuwe sana. Uh, my name is Paul Mashari Amuirori, and I'm coming live uh, from Georgia Pepper Church, Georgia Town Pepper Church. And I'm so blessed to be here today. And I want to thank God because of his love, his uh, mercies upon my life. And I'm so grateful that he can give us, or he has given us this opportunity that we can gather together here, wherever you are at home, and then uh, we can uh, share the word of God together. And today, I'm so happy to be the, uh, the minister of the word, or to be sharing the word of God with you. And I'm going to speak concerning the power of God. And uh, when I'll be thinking about power, uh, power has uh, many uh, issues towards it. And many people would like to receive power. And when I was thinking about power, I was wondering, or I was trying to ask myself, what is power? And uh, as I was trying to do my old background research, I realized that uh, power is the ability to control people or things. It's also a form of authority. It's also a form of influence. And one thing that I have known or discovered uh, that those people who have power are people who are privileged. And people who are in power or who have power uh, is something that they like, it's something that they enjoy. And also, many people would go to great miles, they would go to great strength, trying to look for power. And power is something sweet. When you have power, when you are in authority, you feel something good. Why? Wherever you, are, you go, you are recognized. Wherever you go, you are noted. People recognize you. People honor you. People say so and so. They even call you Muheshimiwa. They call you honorable. They call you all sorts of good things. People stand up and uh, allow you to sit on their chairs. They hand over their chairs to you. I remember recently, we had a workshop. And in that workshop, I was appointed and I was given the title president. And when I was acting as the president, I had a taste of power for some days. And it was interesting. It was such exciting. I remember I could give a word and the word could be taken as law or a rule. It would be a command. When you are in power, you are given a lot of respect. You are given special food. You are given people to guard you. It is good to be in power. And today, I don't want to spend so much time on power that belongs to men. I know men can go to any extra rank to obtain it. They can kill. They can go even to look for power from traditional men or witches so that they can be above. They can feel they are high up there. But today, I want to ask to share about the power of God. And I want us to read from the Bible, and I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And the Bible says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Verse 16 says that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the blood and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 20 Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us and to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, wow, without end. Amen. I thank God. Uh, because of the scripture that we have learned, uh, and it, 
introducing us to the power of God that worked in us. And before I talk to the power of God that works in us, I want us to discuss about the power of God himself. And I want to remind ourselves this morning that God is the all-powerful God. He is the mighty king. He is the creator of all things, things that we see, things that we do not see. And he is the creator of everything that is, the things that we see and the things that we do not see. And the Bible says in Jeremiah that 2 and verse 17, O Lord, behold, thou art hast made the heavens and the earth by the great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. And that is a good one to start this morning. And this is Jeremiah who was recognizing the power of God. And what did Jeremiah say? That, O oh Lord, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by the great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing to hide for you. I want to remind ourselves this morning that our God is the great creator. He was there from the beginning. The God who uh, was not created, the God that who was not made. And the Bible says that he is the unchanging God. He is the immutable God. In the book of Psalms 102 and verses 25 and 28, we can confirm that. That all that God is today, he has always been. All that he has been there before, he is even today. And he will ever be forever and ever. I want us to remember this, that he is ever perfect and he is ever non-changing. He is the unchangeable God. He is the unchangeable God. And we can say that he is the immutable one. It's also good to remember that God is so transcendent that we cannot grade him. We cannot equate him to anything. We cannot equate him to any man. We cannot say that he is the highest among a hierarchy. We cannot say that he is number one among many others. When I say that he is transcendent, I mean this, that God is not simply the highest in honor of being. He is existing beyond and above the created universe. You can confirm that from uh, Psalms 113 uh, verses 4 and verses 5. We also call him Jehovah Nisi, Bwana Bendera Yetu. Bwana Bendera Yetu, God our banner. And under his banner, we go from triumph to triumph and say, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can read that from the book of Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 57. We also refer to him as Jehovah Adonai, Adonai, Buana. And he is the master. He is the Lord. All those people ought to remember and acknowledge themselves as his servants because he is the Lord. And with his right heart, he reigns as Lord of our life. He is Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim, that is the powerful, uh, the full of strength God. He is transcendent, as I have said there before, mighty and strong. And this name, Jehovah Elohim, this uh, displays his supreme power, his sovereignty, his faithfulness, his covenant, and relationship with us. And when we talk of him as Elohim, the mighty God, the great God, the superpower, he is the one who raised Jesus from the dead. And I want us to know that his great power has been transmitted to us through the cloth. And when we say that we are born again, it says that we have been to the cross. And when we say we have been to the cross, 
It means we have received his power. And his power this morning, we have received according to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And the Bible says that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and to the uttermost parts of the world. And I want to remind ourselves this morning that through Jesus Christ, we have received power. And at times like now, I want to remind ourselves that we may be feeling that we are exposed. Sometimes I look around me. I don't know if that, this happens to you. I feel afraid. Sometimes I look around me and I feel worried. Sometimes I look around me and I wonder what will happen tomorrow. But God is reminding us today that his power is at work within us. His power is real in our lives. I want to remind ourselves, church, today that the power of God has been given to us. The power of Christ has been given to us through his Holy Spirit. And this power is power over devils, over evil spirits, over demons, over infirmities, over diseases, over situations, and over circumstances. And when we realize that we have this power, I want to remind you that we can overcome every situation and every circumstance. But if we are going to overcome, we must exercise this power. Power in your hands without exercising it is useless. I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, that the power you have received through the Holy Spirit and the power that you have received through the Word of God move out in faith and exercise that power. Cast out demons, cast out uh, sicknesses and infirmities. And I believe that God is going to manifest this power in you. And I want to say the last thing as I conclude, that as we exercise the power that has been bestowed on us, we must involve God. I want to give a small illustration, and then we are going to finish. There was a young man, a young boy, and he was harvesting or digging a hole to harvest sand. And when he was digging and moving deeper and deeper, he discovered a rock or a big stone that was deep down in the hole. And when he tried to pull it outside, he was not able to pull it out. He struggled. He tried to use his shovel. He tried to use his feet to maneuver the stone or the rock to bring it up out of the hole. But he was not able to bring it out. But the good thing, his father was watching from the balcony of their home. And as he was watching, he discovered that the son was struggling. And he came down to him. And he asked him, son, what is the matter? Why can't you be able to bring this stone outside? And the, the son told the father, I have tried all that I could. But I was not able to. And the father asked the son, Have you tried everything that is in your power to do to bring this stone outside? And the son said, Yes. But the father said, No, you have not used all that is in your power because you have not called me your father. And now that I have come, we are going to pull the stone out. And together, he put the lock that was uh, too hard for him. The father helped him to pull the rock outside the hole and it was successful. What does this teach us today? That we need to involve our father. If we are going to be successful, if we are going to win this battle, if we are going to go to the other side of the way, then we must involve our father. And our Father is the one I have described to you there before. He is the mighty God. He is the powerful God. 
and he is able to deliver you. I want to refer to the scripture that we read, Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21. But I want to read verse 20, and then we are going to pray. And the verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. I want you to know that, that him, the owner of power, the almighty God, the all-powerful God, him who is able to do exceedingly, even abundantly, above all that we ask, and not just all that we ask, even all that we think, and according to the power, that's what I want you to take home or uh, to carry with you today, that according to the power that worked in us, we have power bestowed in us, power is working in us, and we can use this power even to influence the world around us. The world gives people power, but the word of God has given us power through his Holy Spirit, and it is our duty to exercise this power. I want to urge you that when you feel low, when you feel that you come to the end, that you may remember that you are not powerless, that you are not useless, that you are an honorable man, you are an honorable woman of God, because you've been given power, you've been given authority, you are a man of honor. Stand out and shine for God. Stand out and take your position. Stand out and take the power, exercise it, and involve the Father. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, because of the power in your word, the power through the Holy Spirit, the power that works in us. And I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that this power that raised Jesus even from the dead is going to be made manifest in our hearts, is going to be made manifest in our lives. I want to thank you today because of this man or this woman, this brother and this sister that is uh, listening to us from wherever they could be today. We are going to reach forth with your power to them. We are going to deliver them from every worry. We are going to deliver them from every pain. We are going to deliver them from every sickness. We are going to deliver them through your power from every infirmity. I pray that you may give your people success through your power, that God, we may celebrate and rejoice in you. We thank you because of the doings, uh, uh, your doings in our lives, and we submit to you. We submit to your power that you may continue reigning in our hearts and our lives. Bless your people, bless your church, and this we pray believing and trusting in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Thank you so much. May the Lord God bless you. May you continue trusting and believing in our Lord. Amen.